All right, so I am very happy to introduce Sonia Homer, class of 2016, and she'll be our fabulous painting instructor this evening. So I am gonna hand it on over to her. Hey everyone, um, I'm glad to see you all here. Um, just a little context about what I do. I actually teach art at the Roxbury Latin School in West Roxbury. So that's um, what I'm working on now. And I'm also pursuing my master's in science of education at UPenn. Um, but in, you know, in my free time, I love to paint, fill, and do my own work um, in watercolor primarily. So I'm really excited to have you all here. And I was actually really thrilled that you all chose the uh, jumbo photograph since that was the one I was kind of rooting for secretly. And um, my students also were really into that one. So they'll be excited to see the results here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and flip my camera. I have a webcam going so you guys can see what I'm working on um, from above because it doesn't really help you to look at my face. It's not gonna to be too informative. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and switch it over to that. And um, just to make sure everyone has the supplies they need, um, everyone should have a set of watercolors, some water, um, a paper towel of some sort. This is an old one, but I kind of like it. Uh, and then a few different brushes of different sizes. And um, that should be, and obviously your paper, that should be about it. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go ahead and switch this over now. All right, can you guys all see that? That's awesome, okay. So I have the photograph in front of me and I'm going to start just by sketching it. And um, when I'm looking at the image, it looks like Jumbo comes in, um, I would say about three quarters of the way across the page horizontally. And then um, from bottom to top about two thirds of the way up. So that's roughly how I'm going to figure out the proportions. And if you guys want to draw a grid initially to kind of help you get those proportions, um, that makes sense. I'm going to go ahead though and kind of sketch out those dash lines where um, looks like this is approximately. And then I want to do little tick marks to mark um, three quarters, one, two, three, four. I'm gonna say he's gonna come down about there. So starting to just sketch out the general outline. This can be pretty rough. Cause I have mine in front of me here, but um, yeah. That'd be helpful. All right. I'm starting to kind of get that S curve of the trunk. And again, this is pretty rough. I'm making it a little bit heavier than I normally would just so that it can hopefully show up a little bit better on the screen. And then if I'm pretty happy with the proportions that I have here, I can start kind of refining the sketch a little bit. So I'm just going to go in with my eraser and get out those extra lines that are maybe just guiding lines I'm starting to sketch in where the ear is, kind of comes in around here. And then you can see behind Jumbo, there is a little bit of a stone wall and it comes in about one third of the way, maybe a little less than one third of the page. So I'm starting to sketch in and lay in that line where the gray stone starts. And that line's going to continue all the way down. So I'm just kind of blocking out the main areas that I'll be painting right now. It doesn't matter if your lines are perfectly straight. Um, if you have a ruler and you want to make them perfectly straight, that's fine, but it's not totally necessary. So 
So I'm kind of just blocking out these spaces right now. And where this tree is, I'm just gonna kind of indicate that through this blob. You know, this probably doesn't look like much right now, but it's going to come together. <laughs> um, draw that line, the lower right-hand corner where you can see the wall coming up. And you can see right near the tip of Jumbo's trunk, you've got a little bit of a chimney coming down. So I'm gonna block that out. Okay. And then maybe next thing to do is to lay in these windows. Again, you don't need to be super meticulous about how straight the lines are. If you do a few of them and keep them nice and light though, that will yield usually a better result than doing a lot of really harsh ones. So there's that. Starting to sketch in those little squares the darker part of the window on the inside. Okay. Getting this lower block. They kind of look like um, Hershey's chocolate bars a little bit <laughs> with the squares that you break apart. So I'm just going to sketch out here, divide this into four sections. Do a line going through that. So this looks pretty good. All right. Now I'm gonna start going into where the eye is located. The eye isn't too far from the edge of the head. I would go in maybe half an inch, start kind of sketching that out a little bit. Okay. You can see there's a little bit of a tree branch that goes in front of this stone wall. I'm gonna get that in there too. Okay, that looks Pretty good. All right. So with watercolor, unlike with oil or with um, some other mediums, you go from light to dark. So you'll want to lay in your lightest values first and then gradually build up to the darker values. So where I'm going to start is I'm actually going to start with some of the background because Jumbo is much darker and I'm gonna leave him for the time being. Um, and if you have a larger brush, like a large flat brush, when I was teaching at Paint Corner Art Bar, we used to have three different brushes and we call the largest one Big Papa. <laughs> that was uh, our name for it. And then we'd have a medium sized one, we'd call that Little Mama. And then a tiny one, we call that Skinny Mini. That was just our nomenclature. It's clearly not <laughs> the most technical terminology, but you wanna kind of have brushes of a few different sizes. They might not be this extreme, but we're starting with our big brush. So we'll start with that one. And what I'm going to start doing is laying in a wash in the background. So picking up a good amount of water, you can kind of see here. And you can see when I pick it up, I'm kind of tapping the brush along the side. So I'm getting rid of any excess, but the brush should still be quite saturated. So I'm gonna start by picking up a little bit of red and be using that red to lay in the background of the building. Starting here, 
I'm going to leave those areas where I have my windows. I'm just going to leave that part blank. So it should be a pretty nice and light wash. And you can see as I get closer to those edges, I'm kind of using the brush on its side. But the reason why I'm using the larger brush is because I want it to be nice and smooth and consistent in tone overall so that I'm not seeing all those tiny little brush strokes. Just working around here. All right, so you're starting to lay in that background. There we go. And you can see that the red for the wall that's kind of in the foreground is a little bit darker. It's a tiny bit deeper than the wall in the background. So you might want to blend that red with a tiny bit of brown. Have it be a little bit more vivid. Not by a lot, but. Just to kind of give this a little bit of depth. Okay, so there's that. And I'm also going to get where the red is. You can see there's kind of this diagonal area here. That's also going to be red. So I'm going to go back in with that other red that I had earlier. Pick up that pigment. And I'm coming in here. And I'm going to allow some of this to bleed through that area where I sketched out the tree just because I want some of that red to show through. And when we draw the tree, when we start painting the tree on top, it'll be nice to have some of that coming through a little bit. Sorry about the glare. <laughs> um, okay. So that's pretty good. All right. I'm also going to get that little red chimney area. So again, picking up just a little bit more red. Just coming in. Laying that in. That's pretty nice. And I'm not necessarily following my lines perfectly, but that's okay. They're pretty light. And at the end, if you want to erase out those pencil lines, you should be able to do that without any issue. So next I'm going to go in and I'm going to start laying in some of this gray because this whole area here on the roof, this is all that kind of nice, uh, cool blue gray. So I'm picking up a little bit of black and mixing it with a tiny bit of blue. And then I'm going to just start doing that wash. And that's maybe a little on the blue side, but that's okay. If you keep it light. You can it. So you can see I really didn't use too much pigment. I'm basically pulling out that same pigment I initially laid down seconds ago and bringing that all the way across this roof. I'm going to pick up just a little bit more now because I didn't have quite enough to make it across. Come in here. Looks a bit harsh, but that's not a problem. Just add more water. 
blend it out. So that's looking pretty good. Now I've done the building and I've done the roof more or less for that initial layer at least. And I wanna go in and start looking at this part here where you've got this darker kind of stone. So I'm gonna go for a gray. This time I'm not going to mix it with as much blue and I might actually have it be a little bit darker just to differentiate. But don't go too dark because your darkest thing here is clearly Jumbo. And so you don't want to overpower him. Definitely want him to pop. So I'm starting to lay in that area where the stone is gonna be. Using a slightly different shade, gray, than what I used before. And this is actually, because the stone is kind of um, a fun texture, this is a good area where if you'd like to, while it's wet, you can kind of do a little bit of an experiment with dropping some pigments in here. So if you wanna take your mid-sized brush, your little mama, <laughs> um, if you will, you can pick up some different colors and kind of drop them in there while it's still wet. And kind of just have fun with it. It doesn't need to be perfectly accurate. This is kind of a fun opportunity to let the colors bleed out and really embrace that fluidity of the medium if you'd like to. And if you feel like that's a bit dark maybe, you can always grab your paper towel and just lift some of that pigment off. Just kind of dab it a little bit. So you get that kind of nice stone-like texture. There we go. All right. So that's pretty good. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is we'll actually start laying in this tree. Um, and I would take the smallest brush to start with that. And blending out a gray once again, maybe mix it with a tiny bit of brown to make sure it's different from what we've got going on in the stone area. Just starting to lay that in there. You can see the tree is kind of coming in. All right. I'll take a darker brown and just hit that edge of the tree. Really kind of set it apart. And soften it a tiny bit. And so what I'm doing to soften it is I'm just going in with a tiny bit of water and just pushing that pigment around, kind of doing a small circular motion. Kind of move it around a little bit. So I've got a nice shadow on our tree. Okay. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start looking at this tree, this green tree that's down here. And you can see I'm leaving Jumbo for the very end to actually start painting him. Um, so what I'm going to do for the 
smaller sort of green tree. And you guys can also use your artistic license here. If you wanna do a more autumnal tree, and go orange or something, go for it. Um, but I'm going to take this sort of medium sized brush and I think it's helpful if it has an angle for that foliage there. Um, and I'm going to start picking up some greens and yellows. Hang those in. And again, this is an area where you can kind of be loose with it initially. Get some bleeding there of the paint and pigment. Okay, so that. I'm gonna go up top and I'm going to do that there as well. So I'm starting to lay in that tree that's kind of covering up part of the building. And I'm letting some of that red show through from before because I want it to not be completely covered up offers a nice contrast. These are just kind of quick, loose strokes. They more or less give you the sense of the foliage. All right. There we go. I'm actually gonna go in, I'm gonna get that little bit of red that I missed from before. That little edge here. So I'm still using my medium brush for this part. So you can see the elephant is starting to take shape in the negative space here. more or less I'm going for. It's maybe a bit brighter than it was on the other side. If that's the case for you, just go in with your paper towel and just dab some of that pigment away. That will bring you back to where you wanna be. Okay, looking pretty good. Now, we've got some little um, speckles of leaves over in this corner. So I'm gonna still use my medium sized brush for this, pick up some of that green and kind of just at random do some little dots here and there, little dashes and dots. I'll connect these later with some branches, but just keeping it pretty light and simple for the time being. All right. So pretty nice and loose. Just a little bit, sense of foliage over there. Okay, good. Um, 
so what we'll do next is we're going to actually start going into Jumbo, which is probably what you guys were all waiting to do and wanting to do. So let's get going on that. Um, we want to start, of course, working with lighter layers first. So mix a very pale gray, and I would say you can blend um, black with a little bit of blue, and maybe even purple. I don't like to use what's right out of the box typically because it usually just doesn't look quite as good. So I'm blending a few different colors and I'm trying to just get a sense of what I want. But I'm adding purple, blue, and black. I'm gonna start keeping it really light because I'm not sure if I like this color yet, but this looks about like what I'm going for for my initial layer at least. So I'm going in with my mid-sized brush. I'm just kind of laying in that initial layer. Blend out a little bit more of it. And if you're worried that your color might be a little bit too dark, um, go to the darker part of Jumbo and, and start there, right? So under his ear, it gets pretty dark. If I know I have more pigment on my brush, that's where I wanna go with that pigment to start. Because then I can always still blend it out. I'm tapping my brush in between. I feel like I have a decent amount of pigment on here. So I'm just getting a little bit of extra water and I'm kind of pushing around pigment that I've already laid down here. Use the edge of your brush to define those edges like along the ear. All right, Make a little bit more of that color. I'm kind of trying to do my strokes so that they go along with the contours of his face. You kind of see that. More or less. Coming into the trunk. This part's a little bit trickier maybe for some of you who feel like a little bit unsure about your steadiness with the watercolor. So if you wanna to switch to a smaller brush as you go into the trunk, that's fine. That makes sense. Okay, I'm just coloring that trunk, bringing that pigment all the way up. And again, my apologies for the glare. I think maybe it's glaring a little bit there, but you can kind of see that. Okay. I'm just coming in here, pulling that pigment out, pushing it up. All right. I 
How are we all feeling? Good. Awesome. I would recommend occasionally too, if you're feeling like, I don't know how this is looking, just stand it, stand up and look at it from above. That can really help give you some perspective. Um, okay, it's looking pretty good. Um, I need to get the back of his ear, the part that's kind of drooping down on the other side, this little bit here. So I'm gonna go in with a little bit of a darker color here. All right. I've got my initial jumbo laid out here. We'll build up these shadows. So we're not done with him. You can see I'm starting to kind of go in there to find where that ear is. Some shadows coming in here. So I'm just gonna kind of start blocking those out with a little bit of a light, a light wash in color just a little like a couple shades darker than what I just did. So the ear is pretty dry right now. I feel comfortable going into the ear. If it's still wet, you run the risk of it bleeding out. So there's a shadow that kind of comes up that I'm going to block out. There's a shadow that comes across. Getting the sense of where those are. There are these fun little kind of crinkles in the ear. I'm gonna start capturing now. Getting a little bit darker and adding in this shadow here. I'm gonna get even a little bit darker now and really start pushing this shadow here underneath the ear. You can get a little bit experimental with your color use. Like I added some rich blues in there. So I'm starting to really push these shadows. I'm tapering it out. Yeah. Revisiting that upper ear because that's also a darker shadow. You can kind of tell which are the darkest areas of shadow if you squint at it. Sometimes that helps. Then you've got this nice shadow right around here. Around its, I'm not sure if this is cheekbone or what's going on, but. <laughs> like he's got some nice cheekbones. I'm coming in and following this shadow all the way up the trunk. going around the eye socket. Kind of just revisiting the trunk there. The trunk actually gets really dark near the top. This darkest part of it is like right there. I made that kind of purple, but that's okay. It's kind of cool.
you can be pretty creative with this. You can make it this any color you want, really. It's about the values rather than the colors. As I move into this top area, maybe I'm feeling like I want to switch over to my tiny brush. I think that might be a good idea. First, I'm just gonna take my paper towel and dab along this ear to define that a little bit. I'm gonna go back and revisit it once it's a little bit more dry. But here we go. There's that. And I'm just going to go into the trunk here. I'm adding a little bit of black to that top part because it's really dark actually. And this will pop against the background. Hit this with a little bit of that darker color as well. And we need to take care of his eye, that's a thing. So I'm gonna go in with that black, leave a little bit of white where his eyelid is, kind of go around here to indicate the wrinkles. small little strokes. You can get some of those strokes in the trunk too. There's a lot of great texture in this. Darkening up the mouth a little bit. So you can see I'm really adding those finishing touches to push out those shadows. All right, it's time we should probably revisit the background a tiny bit because the background's looking a little 
lackluster compared to Jumbo now. We need to lay in those windows at the very least. Maybe a few tree branches as well, but we, we'll see. Okay, so going back to the background, we've got um, the windows that I left blank. So I'm gonna go in and just with a really pale gray, Just could you just be a mixture of black and a decent amount of water. I'm just gonna go in here and I've sketched out the squares where I want my windows to be. And I want the inside of the windows to be lighter than Jumbo's trunk because they are in the background and they're pretty light. So I'm going in there and just kind of indicating where those are. Pretty good. Got that first set. Now I need to go to the bottom set and get those. So I did kind of a grid here for this bottom set of windows. And I'm just going to go inside these squares and do squares within the squares. So I didn't sketch them out, but I'm going to approximate it. When in doubt, keep it light. You can always add darker values later. And that's really what it's all about. It's like layering these translucent washes on top of each other. And this is nice and dry, so it's not gonna bleed at all, which is good. I haven't touched this background in a while. That's why you kind of want to do this in stages. You want to work on one area, then go back and work on the other. That helps you avoid any bleeding with the colors. Just laying in these windows. This part probably feels like a breath of relief for some of you who have been moving in lockstep and feeling like, what the heck am I doing? with this trunk. <laughs> kind of methodical and relaxing. So I'm getting these windows in there. We've got 10 minutes left. I think we can do this. <laughs> you can see these aren't perfect squares, but they're good enough. They get the job done. And let me get a little bit of this window up here as well. So I'm just going in. And that one's actually a little bit more blue. It's maybe reflecting more of the sky or something. So I'm going in with a slightly different blue gray, getting the inside of that one. And then down here, gonna use that same blue gray right there. And I'm actually gonna transition back to the red to hit that wall in between. So I can get that right there. And that's that. Okay. Pretty good, pretty good. Um, I am going to say the next thing that I'd like to do is while this area is drying, these windows that I just set in, I'm gonna take a look at this tree up here and say, I'd like to add a little bit of branches. So still working with a tiny, tiny brush, whichever smallest one you have. I'm gonna go in with a black, mix it with a little brown. And this part you're using essentially mostly pigment and very little water. So this is a dry brush technique. Um, it's almost like you're using the watercolor as a pen. It's mostly pigment, not 
not very much water. I'd say 80% pigment to 20% water. Um, and I'm going to go in up here where the branches are and just start kind of laying these out. I'm going to be nice and skinny. You don't need to get every single branch. That's not that important. The idea is that you're showing where they are, that they exist. There we go, there's that. It's pretty good. And there are also some branches coming up here in this tree. So I'm gonna go into that tree and, and throw a few little squiggly branches in there too. This part's kind of fun because you can control the dry brush a lot more easily than you can the wet brush can really kind of tell the pigment where to go. Treat it almost like a pen. You don't need to fill the whole area with branches, just a few of them here and there are good. Okay, that looks pretty good. If you wanna get a few poking out down here as well, do a few of them. Okay. That's pretty nice. Also going to revisit this tree a little bit and just get some little dry brush in there. I'm just darkening up that difference between the tree and the stone behind it. There we go, it's coming forward a little bit more. And if you wanna get more of the branches later on um, that come kind of across this chimney area, you can do a few more of those lines over there because you can see there are a few coming across there. So that would just be a few of these little guys kind of going across. This so will give you kind of a sense of space, foreground and background. There we go. It's pretty good. Okay. So we're on to the finishing touch time. And I want to make sure I left a little area blank here. So I'm just going to Fill that in with some gray. Show the background where the stone would be. And you can also add in these nice little lamp posts if you'd like to. Um, if you want to do that, you can throw in kind of a little dark cap here and kind of sketch out where that would be with your watercolor. And while you've got this nice dark pigment on your brush, if you want to define any of those other areas with a deep, rich black, sort of along the elephant's nose, trunk. Get a couple more of those wrinkles in there. You can do that. That's pretty good. And I want the inside of my lamp to be lighter, right? It's seeing through to the background right now. So that's not gonna be good. Um, one thing you can do there is you can try lifting the pigment by kind of 
scrubbing at it with a tiny bit of water, like so. You can see it's getting a little bit lighter there. And then if you just dab it with a clean paper towel, you can try lifting some of that up. Or if you have a white paint, you can always, if it's dry, go in with that and layer a little bit of that just as a hint right on top. So you have the interior of that layer. And now it's just down to the finishing touches. So it's whatever you wanna do, wherever you feel like, oh, I need a little bit of a shadow here, or maybe I, I've got some white on my brush because I just did the lamp down here. And I wanna hit you know, a couple moments of shine in the trunk, like up at the top, maybe like right there. Um, so this last part is really up to you, whatever you think you have left to do to make this feel complete. Maybe I want to darken this shadow behind the ear a tiny bit more. Just push that out. I'm just defining that edge of jumbo a little bit. All right. How are y'all doing? Mine looks exactly like yours. <laughs> exactly. Awesome. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to switch the camera over because I think it's 7 p.m. So bear with me a moment. Can we want to do a little show and tell? Yeah, I'd love to see it. Okay, here we go. I'm back. I'd love to see everyone's work. Here's my jumbo. Yay! Love it. Feel free to unmute. Looks so good. Oh, I like I like the strong reds of that, Emily. Fun. Oh, I love oh, look at that. Thank These you. These are all great. Luckily, I'm not seeing anybody else's. Wait a minute. You might want to hit view gallery. Yeah. Wait, wait. Alexis, I think we we can't quite see you guys because your background's coming in front of oh, your yeah. thing. Hang on, hang on, I can't, I can't find, I, for some, a remove pin, okay, I pinned There you go. Okay, now, everybody who showed already show again, because I didn't see any of it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get everything up, oh, we got, Lauren's looks great, look really Julie, good. can see yours, it's also kind of going in and out of the background there. It's really Oh, we got the upper corner, oh, I like these, these are very interesting, I love everyone's take. <laughs> oh my gosh, these are like actually really <laughs> good. And yeah. Wow. I love all the different styles we all have. There we go. Hope you guys had fun. That was awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.